forum is to bring college faculty, staff, and students together in one setting to promote and enhance interactive co collaboration <coughs> through sharing of ideas, insights, and information. If you have any pertinent information or ideas that you would like to share, just email me in advance and we'll make it happen. And that means for faculty, staff, <coughs> as well as students, if there's anything of concern that you would like to share with the college, this is the place to share it. We will give you that opportunity. Today, we have a um, few speakers today. We are going to start with uh, Duane Duret, the Dean of Community Education. He will be sharing with us updates on the planning of the 20 years of the Arcaic Fine Arts celebration, as you can see right there. Uh, this is scheduled for April, so he'll be giving us more details on this. And then, um, he's going to be followed by Dr. Deborah Kreger, Director of Trio Talent Search. And of course, Deb will be followed, will be accompanied by uh, Kim Horton, the Director of Student Support Services, Jeff Calden, a director of Upward Band, and later we may hear from their boss, Kayla Drum, <laughs> the executive director of student outreach programs and student success. So we have a whole pack of information to share with you today. And uh, uh, if we have more time when they are done, then I will give a few remarks as well as let you know two, one or two topics coming up during the next month uh, forum. Uh, one of the things we are working on for next month's forum is uh, working with students under the autism umbrella. So uh, Sandra Hatnett, Phyllis Tiffin, Don Calden, and Leanne Salaz will be, uh, they are working on this and they will be getting us more updates and that will be relating those to you in the near future. So March is going to be very exciting because autism is something very special uh, across uh, the board, yeah, especially in education. So we like to address those issues. Uh, that being said, at this time, I will call upon Dwayne Durant. Thank you, Dr. Ivory. Um, about this time last year, uh, I was given the, I'll call it, opportunity 
to uh, put together a program where we celebrate the 20th year that will be in the Marjorie Alcack Fine Arts Building. Uh, anybody not know where that is? Uh, hopefully there's a, nobody will respond to that. But anyhow, that's our Fine Arts Building that was built uh, uh, 20 years ago. And so we're going to celebrate that with a month-long celebration. Um, Okay, but you're going to have to figure some of this out. Where, okay, so we put all of the fine arts in the new fine arts building. Where was band, choir, and the art department? What building was it in before it went to the fine arts building? Was it in Mix? Yeah. Jack Knight. Jack Knight. Jack Knight. Jack Knight. Yeah, it's what is now the Jack Knight building. It's the after it's building three to me, but uh, yeah. it's uh, the uh, nurse after the fine arts left, it went to nursing and uh, then allied then health. Then al yeah, allied health, allied health. So, anyhow, so you can see it went from there, which was very limited, uh, to, to where it is now. Okay, where did the name Alkek? Anybody know the history of Alkek? Marjorie Alkek, uh-huh. Marjorie Alkek was an ex-student. She was very involved in the fine arts, uh, and she donated uh, a, a large sum of money that got this, that got this project going. Oh, and let me, uh, I see Janetta sitting back there. Alex, I'm the Dean of Community Relations, not Community Education. Janetta was a freezer back there. <laughs> Okay, number two, who was the president of Weatherford College when the ALCAC was opened? Dr. Boyd. Yeah, Jim Boyd, Dr. Jim Boyd. Well, y'all are smarter than I was <laughs> Okay, why celebrate the arts? Um, this is a statement, uh, this is the program from 20 years ago. And in the opening, there is a letter from uh, Dr. Boyd. Now, well, I'm going to leave this up here, and y'all are welcome to look through it. There's a great picture, a 20-year-old picture of Mike Indy here. Uh, if y'all want to see that, that's worth the price of admission. <laughs> but um, anyhow, this was the final paragraph. Finally, this is a momentous event because it represents our commitment to and our belief in the future. First, let us transmit our heritage through the arts to the future. And second, let us trust the future generations to the use the arts as a tool to preserve humanity. I thought that was a very insightful statement. Did y'all know, are you aware that the Cold War, everybody is aware of the Cold War, the, between the Russians and America, mm -hmm. and the politicians claim that they stopped this but really what happened, a lot of things, the Russian people were putting a lot of pressure, not that they could put a lot of pressure, but there was a sense of urgency uh, in Russia from the people because of three people in the fine arts. Can anybody think who they might be? One of them is a Texan, one of them's from New Orleans, and the one is from somewhere up northeast. But uh, Texan? Van Clyburn. Van Clyburn, absolutely. He just, uh, he, t he stole Russia's heart. The uh, second one is Louis Armstrong. The other one is Benny Goodman. They took this music over there and the Russian people were saying, what's wrong with this? Do we want to drop bombs on these people? So uh, th there was a lot of political, uh, you know, there, plus there was a lot of other things going on to uh, Kennedy and Eisenhower and things like that. There was a lot of working together. Okay. <coughs> All right, uh, we started off with an annual uh, student art show. This is Merlin's uh, art show that she has, and there was a reception on, and this is on uh, April the 9th, it's a Monday, and the show goes all that week. And I think uh, it depends on Cal if they keep it up all the month or yes. the exhibit student, yes. okay. But there is a reception, and I think it's a real good uh, opportunity to go show your support for Merlin's art department and those students. I, I think uh, they do have some very good, very talented people. Okay, the, the uh, first concert 
is uh, celebrating the American Songbook, and this is on Saturday, April the 7th. Uh, and, okay, the American Songbook, who knows what that is? Okay, uh, this sort of tells you American standards, the mo mostly out of the 20s and 50s, songs were created for Broadway theater and musical film. And can you name a famous composer whose work is included in the Great American Songbook? Would that be Gershwin? Huh? Gershwin? George Gershwin, yes. There's probably the most famous one. Here's some of them. Gershwin, Irving Berlin, Hoagy Carmichael, Cy Coleman, Duke Ellington, Harold Arlen, Billy Strayhorn. Now, can you name something they composed? Porgy and Bess. Yeah. Go, uh, George Gershwin, Porgy and Bess, Summertime. Uh, White Christmas? White Christmas, White Christmas, White Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, Irving Berlin, I think. George Gershwin, I've Got a Crush on You, Night and Day. Irving Berlin, White Christmas, Blue Skies, God Bless America. Um, anyhow, these are, now you notice these are composers. Only Duke Ellington was really a good performer. Uh, none of the others, I mean, they could play and they could sing, but it was nothing like the people that came on now. Who are some of the people that are carrying on this tradition? Back then, there were people like Frank Sinatra, Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan, uh, Peggy Lee. They were doing, they, they, were, they were singing this music. This music, when it was in the theaters, was popular with the theater crowd, but when people like Sinatra, uh, started singing it, that's when it became popular with the masses. Uh, the, these people, they, they took it to a different level. You know, if you've ever gone to a theater production, some of those people are good actors and okay singers. But when you gave it to somebody like Sinatra or Fitzgerald or one of those people, those people could sing. And then that's, that's, these people <coughs> were the pop acts. Uh, and so that was, and so I'm just telling you is what the, why we are doing, uh, celebrating the American Songbook. Also the arrangers, Joanne, the, the arrangers. Oh yes. Set the songs. Thank you, Cal. The, the, uh, the arrangements which came mostly from the jazz uh, uh, and, and pop uh, were the ones that put this where it was more a popular style of music. And if you look back in the history of music in America, the dance. The, the dancing, and so these big bands were back there and they were playing this music, the arrangements of these theater songs that were put to where people could dance. So anyhow, it's an American songbook. Okay, now the second week, which is uh, starts on Thursday, April the 12th through Sunday, April 15th, is Into the Woods. It's a theater production. And this is a play that opened 20 years ago that opened the Alcac Theater, the same play. Nancy McVean, who recently retired from Weatherford College, directed it. Uh, I just noticed uh, the date where it says 2008. Is that not 1998? Uh, I, I think it's a <coughs> I noticed it with Doc Boyd as well. Um, I'm just, just type this up. I noticed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's my English minor. Okay, okay. <laughs> Subtract 20 from 18 and you come up with <laughs> Shirley, help me out here. So. Uh, but also, <laughs> also uh, the, new, uh, the, the new drama uh, director is James Brownlee. And James was in the play as a student here at Weatherford College for the Into the Woods. So I think that's going to be a, a, a nice uh, something to think about. It'll be always a great production. Okay, on Friday, April 20th, the New Orleans Gumbo Kings, they are this, a great band. I've actually got to hear them, and they were a really exciting band. Uh, a variety of New, or New Orleans styles, including traditional Dixieland, New Orleans funk, and the members have worked with all these players. <laughs> and <laughs> my personal favorite is the last one, a trip down Bourbon Street without the bad smells. <laughs> and if you've been to Bourbon Street uh, on certain nights, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, now, Saturday the 28th, <coughs> uh, 21st, I'm sorry, uh, concert 
and, and recognition night. We want to recognize at this time uh, a lot of people on the campus and off the campus that helped the vision of Dr. Boyd had to promote and, and get the Alkec Center opened. And so they will be recognized. The concert will be a night of Mozart. It's featuring the Fort Worth Symphony Orchestra Chamber, uh, Fort Worth <coughs> Symphony Chamber Orchestra. Uh, the symphony is about 50 members or so. Chamber orchestra is about 35, I think, is what they're going to have. So you're going to see a full, almost a full symphony. Dr. Uh, Maestro John Giordano, who conducted the symphony back 20 years ago, will be conducting it. And uh, we're featuring our own Weatherford College artist and resident, Hey Young, Hey Young Song. And if you've never got an opportunity to hear her, this is a great, great opportunity. Incredible artist. And so I uh, hope you'll take the advantage of the opportunity to hear her and the symphony. Okay, uh, the last Friday night of the, the uh, um, celebration is the 27th. And this is nothing but the blues. Now we're trying to do a diverse uh, of, uh, month, a, a lot of diversity, different types of styles of music. Originally we were going to have uh, Don Edwards here. We had, he had some health issues and so we had to re uh, reshuffle things. Uh, we were looking at a, a gospel uh, evening and uh, we had to reshuffle there. So but we were lucky to get uh, this incredible vocalist, Victor Cager, his all-star band. He is really an incredible Singer, entertainer, uh, I think you'll love it. Uh, the blues, uh, the blues, just about everything, whether you come from a, a country background or a, a pop background or whatever, the blues covers it all. So uh, I hope you'll take the opportunity to see that. And then the last night is Weather Jazz Band X's concert and reunion. And we have a history here that goes way back. I was uh, honored to uh, conduct the band from 75 to 90. The band was uh, turned into an incredibly talented group of young people. And uh, they were chosen in 1987 to perform at the Montreux Jazz Festival with Dizzy Gillespie and his all-star orchestra. And so a lot of our students have played with the likes of uh, Ray Charles, Snarky Puppy, Miranda Lambert, Little Big Town, Ray Price, Wynton Marcellus, Toby Keith, Tracy Burton, and it goes on and on. So we've got a lot of great young players and a lot of them are coming back. And uh, not all of them are still playing, but we encourage them all to be there because we, those were great times with great students and uh, uh, we, you know, I, I tell people, turned out a lot of great uh, kids, a lot of them in music some of them in other businesses, some of them, two or three of them turned out to be lawyers, but I can't always <coughs> do good on <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dan, but... <laughs> um, anyhow, look, that's gonna be a, a fun night. And they also, there's pro I haven't counted, but probably maybe up to 10 Grammys have these students been a part of. Okay, uh, now the uh, address at the top, uh, you can go and see uh, uh, this and it describes all the concerts, WCEDU slash ALCAC 20. Go there and let me tell you, we have moved into the 21st century. You can buy tickets and there are three concerts that require purchase. You buy them online. And before we always were old school, you had to walk up and buy a ticket, but not anymore. Now you go on and pick your seat. And uh, so uh, we're very proud of that. Mike Indy and Josh uh, Sterling and Greg, uh, and a lot of folks did a lot of hard work. We got that going. Um, online ticket purchase required for American Songbook, the Fort Worth Symphony and the Gumbo Kings. Reduce ticket cost for symphony for employees and get a hold to Evelyn if you want tickets for this. We're charging $50 and $75 a ticket for uh, the symphony. $50 seating, the, the $75 is you can imagine right in the middle sort of up and those are the prime seats. The others are all $50. Uh, we reduce them by 10 for employees and if you would like a ticket uh, contact Evelyn. 
Uh, American Songbook ticket is 10, Gumbo Kings is 20, all other concerts are free, and uh, all monies made over the cost of presenting all of these programs will go towards fine arts scholarships. So we're very happy to do this, and I know sometimes say, well, we've never had to pay for concerts before, and well, yes you have, it's just been a long time. We've had the Dixie Chicks, we've had the Oak Ridge Boys, and we've had the Count Basie Orchestra. All of these, all of these we charge for. You, you know, they won't, we, as much as I beg, the symphony would not play for free, so we're, we're having to, you know, make up for that. We think there will be uh, a, a great interest in the community. One of the purposes of this, of course, is to draw interest to the fine arts, the importance it plays in the life of Weatherford College and our community and outside of our community. Uh, we, we, it's just one of those things where it's usually the first thing cut when you come to a budget, but it's the first thing that people want to see and expect. So anyhow, we hope to see you there. Anybody have any questions? Thank you very much. And uh, here's this program from 20 years ago, 1998. If you'd like to see it. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much, Wayne. That was very educational. I, I hope there's no quiz. <laughs> what I would like to see is uh, this beautiful picture of my family 20 years ago on social media. <laughs> can you do that? <laughs> yeah, we, can, we can take a look at him with his long hair. And all right. huh? Okay, good. I'm sure he would like to see himself on the social media. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, let's continue with our discussion. Let, at this time, I'm going to call Dr. Craiger to come on stage and uh, give a presentation. <laughs> Can you all see that? <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all so much for being here. And thank you, Dr. Ibe, for allowing me to stick for a few minutes. And I have to <coughs> stick to 15 minutes, so bear with me. OK. Now, as you know that Weatherford College has three trio programs, Upward Bang, Town and Such, and Student Support Services. Upward Bang started at Weatherford College in the year 1999, um, Student Support Services in the year 2000, and Tyler started here at the campus um, 2001. These programs greatly impact Weatherford College campus, the surrounding area, the community, and the many schools in the surrounding area. As a matter of fact, Upper Bang and Tyler Search uh, provide services to like 20 schools together. Um, helping focusing on helping students prepare for college and bridge over to college. On the other hand, student support services provide students with support here when they get on campus and they help students to focus, they focus on retention and completion. Okay, now but to truly understand the importance of this program, we have to go back in time for a minute. So bear with me. In 1964, President Lyndon B. Johnson, as we know, he was all about creating this great society. He was a great man, a visionary man, and he decided he had to do something about the poverty. He chose education as that weapon to fight poverty. So, in 1964, under the Economic Act, TRIO was created. TRIO was created under uh, the Economic Act of 1964, not the Higher Education Act. 
Higher Education Act wasn't formed as yet. Okay? The very first program, Upward Bang, um, was the very first three year program. What happened, this program was meant to target students who were struggling <laughs> academically. So their grades were done there, but they had the potential to attend college. That's what, it was basically a pilot program, okay? And Upward Bound really is an intervention program. It targets like 40, and normally there's like 40 to 60 students on one Upward Bound grant. Uh, there's a lot of intensive intervention, mentoring, and um, tutoring, and the summer component. And then something else happened the following year. 1965, the Higher Education Act was created. And this act was created mainly to provide, to strengthen educational resources for, for colleges and for college students. And then that very same year, something even more wonderful happened. Another trio program was formed, Educational Talent Search. And Upward Bound was taken from under the Economic Act and moved under the Higher Education Act. And from then on, all other trio programs formed, there's a total of eight, were formed under the Higher Education Act. Now, why was Tanner Search formed? If you remember, Upward Bound was created to target students who were struggling academically. <coughs> well, the question was asked, okay, we have a program targeting students who are struggling academically, but what about those students out there who are doing very well academically? They are exceeding the great grades and everything. What's about them? So in response to that question, Tana Search was created. So Tana Search is more like an outreach program. Usually there's like 500 to 600 students on one Tana Search grant. Okay, and Tana Search is the only trio program that targets that serve middle school students. In 1968, um, students what services was created, and as I said earlier on, the goal is to help with retention and completion at the college level. Now, many times people are confused. TRIO, is it an acronym? What is TRIO? But there are, so, there are more than three TRIO programs. So let me explain why the term TRIO was coined. The very first three programs, Talent Search, Upward Bound, and Student Support Service, there were just three at the beginning. So thus, the term TRIO, group of three. Now overall, TRIO programs start um, as assist students who are economically disadvantaged and who are first generation college students with post-secondary education, enrollment, and completion. Let us define the term first generation college student. I know that could be very confusing sometimes. Basically, neither parent guardian has a bachelor's degree. So if your parent actually attended college but didn't um, complete a bachelor's degree, you are a first generation college student. Another thing, another example I want to give you is, um, and let us suppose your parents, both your biological parents, uh, have bachelor's degree, but you actually grew up with your grandmother who doesn't have a bachelor's degree. Guess what? You are a first generation college student because you were not exposed to some of the bachelor's degree during your early years of life. So there are gray areas there, and if you're not sure, call us, we'll help you figure it out, okay? And there are lots of other TRIO programs, but I just have 15 minutes if you want some more information on them, call, get in contact with us and we'll help you with that, okay? Um, there's something you need to know. TRIO grants are very competitive. And um, we are very fortunate to have Kay spearhead the grant writing process <laughs> for all those grants. I just admire this lady. I mean, I can say so much, but I need to stop right now <laughs> because I need to finish this. Um, because the application process is, it's a lot. You have to, when you write a grant, it's about the point system. You have to justify why, and each section gets points, or zero points based on how you write. On top of that, 
this grant is renewed every four or five years, and you, have, you get points for meeting the objectives for previous years. If you do not meet the objectives for the programs, you may not get refunded, okay? On top of that, every year, that day, that actually Tana such is coming up very soon, all right now, all the programs are fixing to submit the annual performance report to the Department of Education. <coughs> and those reports are data-driven. The objectives have to be met. Let us suppose we miss our number, recruitment number, by one student. There is nowhere in the report where we can explain why, where you can provide a narrative why you missed that one number. There is nowhere for any words in the report. It's a number. It's either you meet your objectives or you did not. On top of that, there are very strict regulations um, that you have to follow. For instance, um, someone, someone might think, if a child comes to you um, who is undocumented, that you could help the child provide services from the trade program. Actually, we cannot. So, as I said, there are very strict mandates that you need to know and you need to follow, or else your programs could be cut. So, we have three programs here on campus for over 15 years. What does that mean? It means Trio works. works. We have been doing a good job here on campus. And when I say we, I am not referring just to the Trio programs. I mean the whole campus. Because we cannot do it alone. Many times we have questions, we have concern. We walk our students to the professors. We walk them down to the financial aid office, to the student services downstairs, to the librarian, begging for books and for our students advocating. And without your help, we could not have done it. So TRIO is doing a great program because we are doing it as a team here at Weatherford College campus. Now, even though these programs are highly successful, they have been in existence for over 50 <coughs> years. From time to time, there are threats, threats of the programs being cut, okay? In 1986, something happened. Um, Congress passed a bill called the graham redmond Hollings Deficit Reduction Act. And if that act had become law, over 300 colleges would have lost the trio programs. What does that mean for students? Thousands of students would have lost services, trio program services. Okay? And who are the students who would have suffered most? Those who are, who are most vulnerable? Those who are economically disadvantaged. Those who are low income students. Sorry, I'm first generation college students. So in response to this threat, National Tree, there's critic created. And um, Kay sent out an email to you, to you all um, on Friday, letting you all know Saturday was National Trio Day. Um, so every February, the last Saturday, National Trio Day, Trio Day is um, celebrated. Now, we, the Trio programs here on campus, will be celebrating Trio, National Trio Day, but way later on in March. Um, but let me just tell you real fast the goal of National Trio Day, mainly to promote the programs, um, to let others know of the positive impact of these programs, not just at the campus, not just at the schools, but in the community and across the nation as a whole. And two, to protect access to higher education for disadvantaged students. We have to make sure we protect those who are most vulnerable. So yes, we are going to be celebrating TRIO late March. And um, <clears throat> everyone's invited. So this is not just a TRIO thing. Everyone on campus invited. Um, the theme going to be Weatherford College celebrates Sorry, Weatherford College Trio programs celebrate first generation college students. We'll have three days of celebration. First day, we'll have a trio video posted on the Weatherford College Spotlight. Um, we'll have signs erected around campus informing you all about the trio celebration. 
will hand out I am first bracelet, bracelet that says I am first and pinwheels. Day two will continue handing out I am first bracelets and pinwheels. Now mind you, we um <clears throat> even though we handed out bracelets um for first generation first gen, whether you're faculty, whether you're staff, whether you're students, if you are not a first gen, but you know somebody who is a first gen who is not at campus that day, you can wear a bracelet for them. As a matter of fact, we have over, Talent Search Alone has over 600 students out there in the schools who would not be able to be on campus. So you can wear a first gen bracelet for them. Uh, the pinwheels, what we are going to do is stick them in the ground under the flagpole. So we can have a kind of a visual representation of the first gens we have here on campus. Okay, um, then day three, we are going to have a rally right there in front of the library from 12.10 to 12.30. Um, we'll have, you know, just something kind of upbeat. We'll have some music, we'll have popcorn going, we'll have students with making placards with positive statements, um, cheerleaders, and we'll have. Um, you know, faculty, staff, everyone wearing the first I am first t-shirts, which are being ordered right now. We'll have news coverage from outside of campus. And again, let me emphasize, even though it's um, celebrating first gen, anyone can come make a statement. For instance, a professor, you might know of a first generation student who's struggling. So you want to maybe make a positive statement about that or give words of encouragement to first-gen students out there. Or if you have a friend, if you're a student here and you have a friend who is not here and you are here, and you want to make some positive statements about that first-gen student, about barriers they overcame, you know, while at college, you have that opportunity to do so. So <coughs> basically, anyone can come on the stage and make some positive statements. Okay, and we are going to create a first gen wall. It will be a very positive and inspiring wall. Basically, many of you all already um, sent to, to your profile picture and um, your credential to Kim Hutton, and she, what we're gonna do is, um, in, the, in the Acre building, post all of these um, on the wall. So it's a wall, a first gen wall. And again, it will, um, communicate to the students, you know what, we um, are first gen, we kind of understand some of the things you're going through, and look, we did it, you can do it too. Um, three of staff, some of three of staff, most likely Jen and Kim would be, Jeff and Kim would be um, guests on the local registration. We're not sure which day is yet, but maybe Wednesday or Thursday. Now, how can you help to promote and support TRIO? First of all, you need to participate. Do not assume, oh, there's a lot of kids out there, there's a lot of people out there, it's okay, I could stay here and finish, you know, working on this. If you could possibly participate, actively participate, encourage others to participate, uh, your staff, your coworkers, your students, uh, bring a friend from the community. This year, we are just focusing on the campus, but next year, we hope to bring in the students from the community, to bring in more friends from the community and partners and stuff like that. And continue supporting and promoting TRIO. Let me, let me emphasize again. I say continue because you're already doing it, okay? Whether for TRIO programs are successful because of you, because of us working together, and remember why we are celebrating TRIO. TRIO programs help students, help people to succeed through education. And when we work together to promote TRIO, we are helping to build this great society that President Lyndon B. Johnson talked about. And when we create that great society, we all would benefit not just the trio students, 
we all would benefit from. So let's come together, let's work together, and let's continue doing the good job. Let us make sure the trio continues working. Thank you all very much. This ends my presentation. Do you have questions? Okay, thank you. I'd just like to underscore a couple of things that Deborah has said. Number one is uh, the fact that we have had these programs this long on this campus is a testament to the fact that um, the people in these programs have worked very hard to make sure that the students were successful because that is how we are judged on those students' success. And my friend, Lee, when it comes time to put together a grant, I, call, I pick up the phone and call Lee and go, wait, I need for you to pull some numbers. And I will ask him to pull uh, certain things for me like grade point averages, uh, length of time of completion, number of transfers. And what I have to do is compare students who are not eligible for this program, uh, students who are eligible for this program but who are not served, and then our own students in our program. And more times than not, the students who have received services from student support services do better than even the non-eligible students. And there, there is a reason for that. One of the things that SSS does do, and they do very well, is they are not enablers. Uh, I think those of you who are faculty members <coughs> can appreciate that. They, they may send a student to talk to you. They may have coached that student, or they may call to talk with you about their concerns, but we are not enablers. We, te we want to teach students to be advocates for themselves and how to do that. Our two feeder programs, Upper Bound and Talent Search, uh, just make such an impact in our area. You know, we're different than the Metroplex. Our students suffer from rural isolation. Mm -hmm. And we have students who have never been anywhere, who've not been outside the confines of the small towns in which they live. And we have enrichment programs like Talent Search who take them on field trips and to visit college campuses and to get a taste, to give them a taste of what that is like, that there's another world out there beyond that, beyond where they live. And Upward Bound, at, you know, you've seen the, the students on the campus in the summer, They're, the undergraduate high school students are not only getting supplemental instruction to help them return to their high schools and be better <coughs> students, but they are the students who are bridging into college take college classes uh, <clears throat> and uh, we prepare them most of them come to us most of them come to weatherford college but we also have students uh, jeff i believe you have a couple of students this year one who's headed to johns hopkins Johns Hopkins or Rice, depending or on Rice. who's the best uh, <laughs> And uh, uh, neither are shabby places. And Harvard? Uh, or Northwestern. Amherst, or Northwestern, okay. Uh, but those, do you think those students would have had that opportunity to visit those schools and for, to be seen and to see if it worked for something like this? That's the beauty of, of these things. Um, and so um, I do want to thank you all in this room because faculty and staff are supportive of these programs and you understand the importance of them. I will tell you that we have people who come into our programs and work for a while. If you are not, if you don't care about students, you won't last long in one of these programs because these people work incredibly hard. And um, um, uh, so, I would say that there are nobody, there are many people in the sound of my voice and on this campus who care, truly care about students, who truly care about students. But there aren't, there's no one on this campus who cares any more about students than these people. And so that's what makes me very proud to, to work with them and to represent them. And 
I want to give a shout out to, to the person who came before me, um, Dr. Shirley Chenault. She was the person who got down in the trenches and uh, was given the, the mandate to go bring these programs to campus. Mm -hmm. And uh, she got the ball rolling and I was able to pick it up and go on from there. Um, so uh, I want to say thank you to her as well. Um, I do hope that you all can come out for this. I, yeah, it's, you know, some people go, oh, it's a little rah-rah, but I, I think those of you who have worked with uh, our students on this campus understand the ripple effect. We, you know, Jeff had a student in Upward Bound whose mother went, because of her child being in Upward Bound, went back to college, and she's an employee here now. It does have a ripple effect, and so um, you're going to be hearing some things about guided pathways more and more and more. I think Dr. <coughs> Ebay would tell you that the uh, conference they attended in uh, San Antonio, they were talking about how to, what we need to do for these students to uh, improve their chances of graduating <coughs> or completion, and the, the term that was used was uh, give them the TRIO treatment. <laughs> give them the TRIO treatment because they understand that we focus fully on the student. So thank you all for um, that and thank you all for coming out in March and supporting us. We appreciate it. <clears throat> okay, can you come back forward, please? Um, okay, today I want to do something else. Okay, on behalf of the <laughs> Trio family, we want to provide, um, present you with a token of our appreciation and love. Uh, we could not have done this without your guidance without your support, without you advocating for us. Moreover, not just the TRIO staff alone, but the TRIO students, the students here on campus, you are like a guiding light to them, and we are forever um, grateful to you for making that difference. Now, let me show you this. It took me forever to find something I thought would be a good representation. First of all, the red represents TRIO, and then, this is like a flame. I always give Kate candles to remind her that she is a guiding light to everyone around her. So Kate, take this as a token of her love and appreciation for you. <coughs> thank and you. thank you for all you do. Well, so, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. And that's, you got to admit, it, there's nothing more wonderful than having a staff trio who, who, think, who think you are, are great. They make me look great every day, and I, and I appreciate that. What are we going to do? Take a drink. A photo Okay. Come on. Okay. okay. Oh, oh. Okay. You're in the middle. All right. I dropped this off. Does that give it All right. I can see everyone on three. One, two, three. And one more good smile. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. It is. It really is. I wish every one of you could go at least once to the National Council for Opportunity in Education meeting that uh, we ha have every year. You would not believe, they have a, what they call a Trio Achievers Luncheon. And these are people who have reached national prominence in their, in their professions, in their careers, uh, who were once TRIO alumni. Uh, Ronald McNair, the astronaut, was a TRIO alumni. Uh, John Quinones, um, it was a TRIO alumni. There are so many people out there that you wouldn't even know. Uh, and to hear them talk about uh, what they came from and what they were able to become because there was one man who has become the minister of the church in Atlanta. He is, has a doctorate in theology. It was Dr. Martin Luther King's church. It just goes on and on. Astrophysicist and, you know, people who sometimes uh, if you had bet against them, if you had bet 
whether they would finish or not, you would have bet against them. And here they are. So thank you, staff, and thank you all for allowing them to do that. for all that. Uh, this, this year is so beautiful that, uh, uh, again, uh, through the Dean's Forum, we can share this uh, information. And uh, hopefully, we continue to enjoy and uh, share more information like this in the future. Uh, again, uh, Kay, uh, you, are, you are a blessing to so many of our students. And uh, I say this all the time, that um, uh, of all whether for college employees, you, 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 you stand out in terms of what you do. Whenever I, I run into difficulty with students, the first person I call is Kay. And if, you know, I, I have to call her. When students come to my office crying, who do I call? I call Kay. I say, I want you in my office right now. And, uh, <laughs> and then she will step in, and, uh, and uh, most of the time we resolve those uh, situations. And uh, I also like to give a shout out to John Tontine, He's been doing uh, a, a wonderful job, and uh, he has been working very close with Kay in so many other uh, respects uh, right here on campus. And a uh, uh, few things, few other things I'd like to remind you guys. Um, fourth generation college student, very important. I am one fourth generation college student, uh, of course, coming from a, a family of seven siblings, all boys, and all college educated. Parents never read, so I'm proud to be a first generation college student. And then, of course, also, um, we've had, uh, we know before the GI Bill in this country, college education was only for the privilege and the few. Mm -hmm. Only those who have money can afford college education. But then, GI Bill came into the fact of changed things. Then, trio came because of vision from people like Lyndon B. Johnson. And today, uh, we, we, I, we are enjoying a whole lot of uh, uh, college-educated uh, students who otherwise, who otherwise, without those opportunities, would have gone to college. And of course, from time to time, you will hear some uh, politicians who would like to do away with those things. And I remind you, that it is your responsibility, it's your God-given responsibility to make sure that programs such as this stays in existence for life. Because what is good for them is good for you, has been good for me, and it's going to be good for kids coming after us. To today, uh, February 26, 1951, the 22nd Amendment was added to the Constitution, limiting the presidency to two terms. Yeah. That was in 1951 amendment. That was when that was passed. And then, also, on February 26, 1869, the 15th Amendment, guaranteeing the right to vote, was sent to the states to ratify. February 26th. So, ladies and gentlemen, right now in the state of Texas, we have the early voting has started. So you must go and cast your vote and let your voice be heard because somebody or some people die for you to have that opportunity and you must exercise that right. I charge you with that. And then I, 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 I will uh, not be um, candid to myself if I, if I conclude this session without saying that February being Black History Month, uh, I will uh, encourage every one of you, if you have not seen the Black Panther, go and say it. it is a great movie. I have seen it. It made me proud as a human being, and so shall you. Thank you very much. Oh, and, and uh, I want very, very quickly, if I conclude, I, that's one more thing. Um, again, um, February 20, uh, March 26 will be the next day's farm, which is exactly a month from today. I want you to mark your calendar because it's going to be an interesting topic for us to discuss that day. Again, 
If it is the last Monday of the month, it is the dance for. Thank you very much. God bless.